Welcome to the Battlefield Show. I am Scott Gibson, your Commander-in-Chief, guiding you through the battlefield of life. You know what you're here for. No more messing about. Stick the tape in, hit the track, onwards! Episode 21 of the Battlefield Podcast, live from what now is the lockdown bunker. Previously, uh, just a, a standard bunker. Now we find ourselves... I mean, are you, are you really confined to the house? But the situation has obviously changed uh, as, as it is daily with the current uh, coronavirus outbreak. Um, it's it's a very odd feeling, it's a very odd situation. That's the only word that I can find in the vocab to kind of explain how I'm feeling. It's not fear, I'm not worried. Um, I spoke to my wee mom last night after the Bill Boris's statement and the hilarity from that conversation. My, my mother is convinced that it's aliens. She, she will hear no rhyme nor reason. She's convinced that the aliens, uh, and she refers to them as the aliens, <laughs> that the aliens have uh, have descended and they're not happy. They're not happy. And they have spread forth the virus. And as she explains it, the red mist is going to come and get us. Now, I uh, I have no idea what, what movie she's referencing. But uh, according to her, we're all fucked. So the aliens are coming and the red mist is going to take us out. So if you had red mist and aliens on your death bingo card, congratulations, you've won a watch. But uh, yes, the bold Boris over the weekend with his tiny little uh, fist hands. The best thing about that, see obviously if you watch enough of these fucking political shows and, you know, the thick of it or... West Wing. Oh, you, you understand a little bit about politics under the, the kind of base level that is presented to the, to the public. You know that there is some arsehole who, whose job it is, is to sit down and explain to politicians how to position their hands to make them feel more powerful and in control. You know, you need to do the wee fucking, the wee fists, right? There was, there was a point where I was watching them, I'm going... The fucking strain that must be in his hands to hold A.B. fucking fist for that length of time. But turns out we're on lockdown. Um, although it's not technically a lockdown. You know, if you fancy a chase, you can still go out and... You know, a couple of your pals got a good chase after the police, like the old days. Eh? Remember the old days? When cardio was part of a youth... You'd go with your pals and you'd kick about the streets. That's it. You wouldn't go to a youth club. You wouldn't go and learn break dancing <laughs> or whatever the fuck it is Wayne's are doing. At home, playing Minecraft. Minecraft? Does cunt still play Minecraft? I don't know. You were out getting a chase. That's what you're doing. Because everybody knew where the nutters were. That's the thing, right? Everybody knew within their scheme or area or zone, or compound, wherever you lived, you knew where the nutters were. Now, you knew you don't go to that house because there's a chance you could drag down your shaggy ass. You knew that, I mean, nothing was done about it. You know, nobody would ever go to pause because fucking, eh, snitches get stitches, right? We all knew that, okay? But it was just people in the uh, in the area knew where the, the bad people were, right? And it, and it made you feel... It made you feel at ease, right? Like I said, we weren't going to do anything about it. There was no vigilante group, you know? Nobody's going to raise that at the neighbourhood watch, saying, listen, it's high time we get that fucking pedo out here. You're not going to do that, right? Because, you know, he looks after his maw or whatever the fuck the story is. But you knew within the radius of where the fucking nutters were. We knew there was a guy that lived two streets behind my mate. If we sat in the wall, just sat in the wall, that's it. You didn't need to fucking throw stuff at the windies. You didn't need to noise them up. You didn't need to fucking jump the fences. Nothing. You just sat on the wall 
outside the cunt's house and within minutes, fucking doors open and you're off. Every single time now we later found out that you know, he had a couple of things going on at home and you know he was dealing with quite a lot, but we wanted to know that. I mean if he if he had of if he'd addressed the point you know, if he'd come in and says, Lads, I'm struggling here, you don't know what's going on behind this door, we'd have went, Hey, well sorry. We'll go to Pedro's house for a chase. He never, once he came out with a hammer. Came out with a claw hammer. No fucking about I man, never caught us, right? Because he's older and we were fucking young and nimble and you know all the back lanes and stuff. But the way you a good chase as well is you need to stay together. Right? Sometimes, because the fear will kick in the adrenaline, right? And you, and you shoot off and your first instinct is to try and pull one of your pals back, you know? Feed him to the lions, right? So you can get a fucking, a good escape. But you don't want to be too far in front, right? You know, because it's, it's not, the, the point of a chase isn't it to escape, is to keep that adrenaline going for as long as you can, you know? But hey, Wayne's nowadays, it's no their thing, and I get it, it's no their cup of tea. It's no everyone's cup of tea, you know? As he drinks his cup of tea, it's coffee, actually, but... So, um, we're locked down, man. Um, if you want a... If you want a good chase, I imagine going fucking find two of your pals, congregate as long as there's more than two years, it'll kick off. Now, over the last couple of days, certainly over the weekend, I have seen a few videos, um, as I'm sure we all have, from, from Italy and some from Spain. Um, classic candid camera shots of people getting kicked the fuck out of the Polish. Now, I don't think it's going to get to that level, right? I understand when the statement came out last night, the hysteria of people going... Am I going to get fucking tasered if I try and go to Lidl? I don't think it's going to get to that point, right, where you're going to be on your way to Lidl and some community officer. No, you imagine getting tasered after a fucking community officer. If I'm getting tasered, I want to have a real polis. I, I'd, I'd rather the army. I, I mean, you could probably take a polis, you know. I'd rather somebody rolls up in a tank with a fucking AK-47 at the back of the head going, Have you exercised today? Yeah, look at the exercise. So ov obviously that you know has is kicked off. I don't, I just don't. I can't see it going that way, right? I can't see it going that way where cunts are getting fucking, you know, lifted out of the back of a van, in the back of a meat wagon, and and driven off because there's a chance they've they've went to fucking Tesco twice in a day. I don't think that's going to happen. I could be wrong, and listen, see if I'm wrong. Fucking bring it on, because I imagine those Twitter videos will be great. I saw a good one boy in Italy lifting the shirt up to show how he's nothing on him, do you know what I mean? And the guy's like, you should be quarantined, you cunt. And obviously Italian, I didn't speak the language. And then the other Polish come and they, they fucking just go kick his legs away from him, then fucking rugby tackle him. Classic Polish, but one attacks for the back, so he didn't see it coming. Shite bags, but... We, we've, I'm sure we've all been sent the videos um, and images of, of the tanks and the army getting brought in. I, th I thought that was quite exciting. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing a, a tank go up and down the street, you know, patrolling. I, I, I think the now is the... Now, I'm going to be honest with you here, right, and this, this may show... This may show my my naivety of the whole thing because I I'm getting a bit. I don't I don't know if I can watch the news anymore, right? It's just it's just fucking constant, and what I'm finding with a lot of the news is that it's almost it's almost like British celebrity speak, like reality TV speak. But that what I mean is they say a lot but actually say, fuck all. I watched the news, uh, obviously I watched Boris thing, but I watched the news yesterday, in total for maybe three hours, BBC News in the morning, just to get me going, right? I find that if I'm angry and if I'm worked up, I, I tackle the day much better. 
I feel if I'm in a good mood, relaxed, I tend to kind of ease into the day before I know it's three o'clock and, you know, we've, well, hey, we might as well start bevying, right? But if I can get myself angry and worked up, um, then I feel as if I, I, get, I get a lot more done. And there's no better way to get you angry than watching BBC News. Um, the fucking bile and shite that that lot pump out is, is astounding. It's astounding. So I watch BBC News, I watch Channel 4 News, and then I watch the fucking the Boris update. And I feel as if it's the same fucking stuff for churning over and over and over again. Now, again, I could be wrong. I could not be taking it in properly. I don't know if I still understand what the virus is. And I know that might be a stupid thing to say, but it's true. I don't actually know what it does to you. I know the symptoms. I understand that it's a you know a, a a dry cough, a very bad cough, arguably one of the flu-like symptoms to to an extent you've maybe never experienced. I, I saw someone post the other day to say that by day four of having the virus, they lost the sense of taste and smell. Now that's the first I've heard of that. I, I, again, I, I may be naive to it and I may be switching off slightly because I feel as if I'm being bombarded, but I still don't understand what the virus does to you. So, for example, if I was to contract it and I, and I got the virus, what happens to me? Talk me through it. I'm, I'm a, how ill am I? Is there a chance I'm dying? Because from what I can see, or for, certainly from what I'm picking up, it is the vulnerable people in society, people who are, who are elderly, people with underlying health conditions, are the ones that are the most affected by it, or the ones that are the most at risk. But then I'm a big fat cunt, so I'm at I'm a risk. You know? Have I got underlying health issues? <laughs> We've got a lot of underlying mental health issues, but I don't know if that's the same fucking thing, you know? Same wheelhouse. Fuck knows. But... We're on lockdown, so I suppose it feels a bit more serious now. I think I think that after the weekend just gone there, the fucking the piss take for people was unreal, unreal man. It felt as if the streets felt like two days before Christmas. That's what it felt like. It felt like Christmas. There was a, a euphoria in there because people are like now getting sent home for work or been told the work isn't open, you know, so people had this fucking, oh, I've not got work for fucking three months, it was great, you know and because everybody's in the same boat and then the government's coming out, I mean, no obviously no for fucking self-employed people, because nobody gives a fuck about us the people are having parts of their salary guaranteed, so this kind of like going, fuck, it's a holiday, people are, there are people who are no caring and what I meant was at the weekend, we took the dog out for a walk <laughs> And I have, New Edinburgh's a busy place anyway, I have never seen so many people out in my fucking life on a Sunday afternoon. Now bear in mind, nothing's open. Cafes are shut, pubs are shut, restaurants are shut, nothing's open. But the volume of people that were out was unbelievable. You would have seen the pictures for Snowdonia, the mountain in central London, Richmond Park. It felt as if something like this lockdown had to come because people were taking the fucking piss, man. Nobody's taking it serious. Nobody's... I don't think a lot of people are taking it serious. Now, is that for one or two reasons? Is it because... Is it... I mean, if, if anybody's lost somebody to it, then it's a fucking terrible thing, you know, but... Is it because all we're hearing is numbers but we're not actually physically seeing anything? So you feel detached from it for a certain point. You, you feel detached from it. And again, is it the, is it the message of it's, it's affecting the vulnerable? So people are going, I'm a, I'm a young, fit, healthy person. Fucking, I'll kick fucking corona. Fucking bring it on. Also, I heard they're, they're looking for people to be tested with it. £3,000. Fucking inject it in each arse cheek. I'll take six grand off you. I don't know, man. But the, the whole lockdown thing, it had, to, it had to come at some point because... Nobody's f people are taking a piss, man. The message should to go to uh, Tesco the other day, and again we need to get a bit. I'll try to do an online shopping now. Good luck getting a fucking time slot for that. 
because again, inner city living, so it's all like we Tesco metros to be mini ones. So we kind of in the past we would shop every day or every two days anyway. So we're having to get a bit better with that. So we're more stocked up. We haven't been panic buying uh, one because uh, where are you going to put it all? Again, that's a, that's another argument for people who are panic buying food. And we've all seen the video of that woman, right? And I'm getting into trouble because she's doing my fucking nothing. Just stop it. Just stop it. Do you know what? Fuck off, right? Just fuck off. Uh, the whole... This whole kind of loving that we're all doing is fuck, it's getting to me, man. It's getting to me. Because well, that's no odds. That isn't what people are like. Right? The attitude of this country is, fuck you, you cunt. That's the attitude. It is this, that kumbaya, my lord. That's no how people are. The, the thing that's happening this week on Thursday, clap for carers. <laughs> clap for carers. I mean, in the name of God. They want everybody... This is this is off the back of the fucking Italian thing. They want everybody in the country to go out of your balconies or out your windows, right? Because you can't congregate in the street because we're locked in. And clap. Clap. For carers. <laughs> oh. That this is the this is the one of the things that gets me. And 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 I suppose do you know what? No way bring up Brexit again, right? But spin that in his head. See if I was in Europe, see if I was a, a European, right? I would have been like, you want to leave? Fuck off. Because the thing about the economic side of it being part of the European Union, that's different. But as people, we are not European. We're not. And see if you think you are. See if you're listening to this and you think, I'm a European big man. I, it's in my heart and my soul. You've never been to Europe. I'm telling you, if you have ever been to mainland Europe, and seen, witnessed, real Europeans. That isn't us. And I'm sorry to break it to you. We are dark, dour-faced, sad, grumpy, moany. That, that's the opposite of European. You, you, you see the videos in Italy. When they're all singing in the balconies, right? And you're watching that. You're going, ah, ah okay. All right. No one found well. If that was to happen here, you'd be like, shut the fuck up! You'd be, you'd be laughing, I'm not. You know? And people see that and they go, how can we not do stuff like that? Because we're fucking Scottish, that's how. Because we're Scottish. Right? Fuck off. Okay? We don't... See, the rest of the year... But see, before coronavirus, see a day before coronavirus, I couldn't pick out one of my neighbours in a fucking lineup. And now we've got to hang out the balcony and pretend that we're all pals and we're in this together. And the one you hang out the balcony and clap, you should do something British. Huh? Do something Scottish. You know? Hang out a balcony, drinking a fucking can of tenants, singing sectarian songs. That's what we should do. That's more, that's more British than fucking clapping your hands or banging a pot. Banging a pot. Banging a pot. Even the lassie who's, who's organised it, like, I think she's Dutch, you know, and she's got fucking joy in her heart, man. Because she's, she's a real European. We just want to show them that we, you know, we care for them and what they're doing. Get the fuck, man. This, this is one of the other things with the whole fucking... But the, but, the, but the way the world is the new, right? Now, yes, we're all in it together. We're all in it together in the sense that... In the sense that it's happening to everyone at the same time. But believe me, and as sad as it is to admit, nothing will change once it's done and it's all back to normal. Because as soon as the gate opens for real life to return, the amount of cunts that will just bolt through that door and go back to shafting people as much as they can. I'm telling you, 
everything's changing. Everything is changing. And I suppose we need to look at it in a, in a positive way to maybe try and look back to what normality was and think that, right, that, that we don't need that anymore. For example, right, a, a little thing. Just now when you're watching the news, right, and I only know this because I've done a couple of things in the past. Just now when you watch the news or we're watching programmes, people are doing interviews as, as they are, as I am speaking to you just now. And they're doing it from Skype, they're doing it from home. Right? Now, in the past, I have been brought in a couple of radio things, and I'm not making this up, you, you'll get a fee. They then put a car on for you. You're then brought in, depending on the time of day, you may get something to eat, you may get some breakfast. You'll do your fucking thing, which could be 30 seconds. One time it was 30 seconds. I was driven in a car from Glasgow to Edinburgh for 30 seconds, and then driven in a car back to Glasgow again. What is the fucking point? Stuff like that needs to change. You know, how, how do we how we interact has to change. One of the biggest things in there is obviously is schooling. You know, but I mean, and this may be upset a few of you because I know I have a few people who listen who are teachers, right? But <laughs> how much of a waste of time is school? Answer me that. Now, I know the teachers are going to go, it is the most important thing in a child's development. Is it fuck, man? Is it fuck? There's nothing. There's nothing that you get in school. Is, school is simply a, a prison without the title. School's a, a minimum security prison, right? It simply keeps all the young people together for a, for a certain time for parents to... To go and work, in a, there's, I mean, primary school, forget it, right? There's, there's, forget it, okay? Reading and writing, you'd fucking pick up eventually. Watch a YouTube video, right? High school, there's a slight argument, but again, I'm, I'm no buying it. There's every single year, when you go to high school, I mean, I remember it. You go in your first year and you're shining yourself. Oh my god, I've got pubes. Life's terrifying. You get to second year. First thing I told, this is the most important year of your development in your academic career. Third year, this is the most... Forget what I said last year, I was only kidding you in. This year, this is the most important year in your academic career. You come back for four of you. Listen, I'm, I'm sorry, I was, I was... I know, I'm a bad bastard. I was lying to you again. This year is the most important... Fifth, and, and it goes on. It goes on. Until you get a university. If, if you if you if you go to university, because I was, I came from that period of children born in the eighties and early nineties, where we had this, um, we had this this sense from our parents because they never had the opportunities we had that it's so important for you to go to university. You have to go to university. You know, I don't. I don't care. This is this is what I was told once. I don't care if you don't want to go. Just pick something. What is the fucking point in that? And now, as education's changed, information's changed, jobs have changed, careers have changed. People are maybe understanding that there is more to to life than spending in your early twenties in, in education. To then come out with a bit of paper that's fucking meaningless because you kind of got a job anyway. So I don't know, man. There's, I saw a thing yesterday where a teacher was on saying, listen, you don't have to, you know, your education for your child at home doesn't have to be from nine to three. I mean, 90 fucking three, man. Fuck me. How many of us wish we had a job fucking 93? Huh? 93? 25 weeks holiday a year? I fucking never in. <laughs> Homeschooling's probably easy because they're fucking never in school. I know there are obviously some people, and there'll be some mothers and fathers who will be loving this opportunity. You know, pro I imagine the kids are probably coming down first thing in the morning and, and the mom's there in a fucking a, a dress suit, and they're like, what the fuck are you doing? You, don't call me mother. Call me Mrs. Jacob from now on, okay? And now sit down, please, kids. You're like, fuck off. <laughs> 
I wonder how many parents are actually sitting their kids down and just being honest with them, going, listen, I never, I never learned a fucking thing at school. I failed every exam that I had. So I, I don't know what you want me to tell you. But I've, I got a trade. I started at the bottom. I worked my way up. I got my own van after a couple of years. Started my own business after a few years. And after that, I employed six guys. And then it's went from strength to strength. And this is where we are now. This hoose you're in, those clothes you're wearing, that iPad, that fucking smartphone, that's for me and your mum. For working hard grafting. Eh? I could get tell you a fucking thing about school. I could tell you about grafting. Why don't why don't we sit kids down the new and explain to them how a fucking overdraft works? Why don't we explain to Wayne's how you pay your council tax bill? Eh? How debt works. Right? APR rates. Because after this fucking virus is all done, we're going to be fucking up to our eyeballs in debt. I tell you that much. What's going to, what's going to happen to this man? I do think we need to keep calm. I, I think it's going to be a couple of... A couple of months. And then it goes back to... But what... Everyone keeps saying it goes back to normal. But what? what is normal? You know, I don't know. Eh? I don't know. I don't fucking know, mate. Comedy's a big one as well. I'm uh, I'm seeing a lot of happy comedians on social media, you know. Sending positive vibes and doing funny, happy stuff. You're like, this is the last thing I want. It's happy comedians. Is, it, is this what's going to happen to my industry? That all the kind of joyful, you know, middle of the road, bland shit rises even further to the top this is when you're meant to get angry man you know this is when you're meant to go after people eh and fucking get angry but instead constantly why don't you join me on um, Friday afternoon at 3pm when I'll be doing a kids friendly variety fun house of what <laughs> Oh, I don't know, man. Who knows what's going to happen? I hope you're well, though. I hope I hope you're all well. I hope you're safe. I hope you're washing your hands. I've never washed my hands as much in my fucking life. They'll be down to the bone soon. But I hope you're all well and I hope you're all safe. Big shout out and a big thank you to everybody who has signed up. Um... On the Patreon, man, um, it's a difficult one. It's a balance, you know, because it's always been a, a part of doing what I do anyway. Um, is that kind of whole sales thing, man, which I fucking hate, you know. I hate it and I, and I struggle with it. But times have changed dramatically on us. And I, and I do you know what? I have moved um, as many of the cancelled tour dates as I could to later on in the year and... Um, as we go further and further down, down the road with this whole outbreak, I don't even know if they'll happen, really, at the end of the year. The next big one to go is going to be the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Um, I saw this morning that the Olympics have been postponed, and I cannot imagine the Fringe will go ahead. But the good thing to keep in mind is that I'd say 95% of the people who are involved in the Fringe... Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make a decision on it and try and, I, I don't know, try and get it to go ahead, but could it go ahead? I mean, the longer you leave it, you know, the the, the scale and, and the trying to get everybody together at that time at such short notice. There, there is a reason why the Fringe starts planning in November. You know, there's a reason why. There's a reason why you start looking for accommodation in, in January. Now, maybe a lot of people have already booked up because this has happened after January and February when that's really the two months when you get everything together. But then you've got to think of things like, if I was to take a show there, would we change it to a work in progress because you're not going to get a chance to do any previews? Um, are people going to want to come out? Are, what are costs going to be like? Because a, a lot of people... 
a lot of people don't want to talk about the cost. A lot of comics don't want to talk about it because here's the thing. A lot of the paid venues, it's very difficult to get in with them. And when people are in, they don't want to rock the boat. But I'll tell you this now, it costs you a fucking fortune. Now, the argument on that may be that I get a co-production. So my management um, front the costs up front. So I don't pay anything out up front to perform at the fringe. But I can tell you right now, you fucking cough it up at the back end. So it, it's very, very expensive to perform at the fringe, which is mind-blowing. Considering it's an arts festival, considering people are coming from all, the, all over the world to, d to display their art, if you like, the fact that it will end up costing you thousands, upwards of £10,000, is insane. But that's what the fringe is. It's probably the biggest thing in the calendar for me personally. And if uh, if it gets pulled, then I think that'll be a big shock to the industry anyway, especially in the UK. And we're all feeling it, man. You know, it's hard. And you can't support everybody, you know. You can't support everybody. Because if people have got themselves to worry about. And then, yes, there are people who, you know, are lucky that... They, they're still able to work or their salary secure or it's coming in. Um But we're in a tough situation, man. There's no there's no live work. Um so there's no way for money to come in. There's no there's no way to make money either. Other than trying to do things like this. And that's what we're gonna focus on. More content, more podcast episodes, more live stuff, more videos. Look at the things that we've got as well. And for me personally, try and get over that kind of hurdle that I have of always wanting everything to be perfect. I've got two albums sitting ready to go. I've got a a live show that has been filmed ready to go. And I've held back on all of them because I have not felt they're perfect and I want to tweak it in some ways. And that has got to go, man. That's got to just fucking get that out the window. We just need to get the content out there. So to everybody who's signed up on Patreon, thank you so much, man. You've you've no idea. Um, you know, it's going to help a huge way, uh, keep us afloat anyway. Um, but I need more of you. There's, there's not enough. Um, we have, we've we got a small army that now is growing to those legends who have signed up first. But we need to build it. If you would like to support me in any way, if you've been to see stuff in the past, if you've enjoyed any of my shows and you want to help um, keep us going, Anyway, then please join the Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash Big Scott Gibson. You will get an extra episode every week. And all the stuff that will go out uh, will go to Patreons as well. So the albums, the videos, um, anything that's that's made from the comedy in the future will go on paid sites, for example, like Bandcamp, or you can buy it through the YouTube channel or through my website. But if you're on the Patreon, you will get these things. So it's an investment as well on your part and my part. Um, obviously, it, it helps keep everything running in what could be a, a difficult few months because the other thing with live comedy is, are we going to go back to it? Is it going to be the same? You know? There's so many questions, man. It's it's a, it's a worrying and an exciting time. Oddly, it's an odd thing to say it's exciting, but... Because things have to change. It cannot go back to the way it was. After this situation, I really hope people are more... Not sensible with their money, but more... Um, they value their money more. They value their time more. I think one thing that I'll take from this, after being stuck in this fucking house, is my time is valuable. You know? Yes, I want to do podcasts. Yes, I want to do different things. But your time's valuable. And your money's valuable. So are you going to go to a comedy club and pay upwards of £25 a ticket to see shit? Or are you going to go direct to the people who you enjoy, the performers you enjoy, and invest in them? I don't know. Are clubs going to have to be more on board with their signing and their booking policies. You know? Are you going to accept going to a restaurant that's just okay? 
things need to change, man, definitely. But what's going to happen? I don't know. So get on the Patreon. Um, it's the it's the best way to to support me, and it's the best way for you to receive extra stuff. It's patreon.com forward slash Big Scott Gibson. This week as well, uh, tonight, um, Wednesday, nine o'clock, we're going to do the first quarantine quiz um, live over my Facebook page. Um, here's one thing as well. See if you've got an invite for my page. Fucking like it, man. Just fucking like it. I'm desperately trying to grow the numbers to sh- build the audience so we can get more people involved in this stuff. And I must have about fucking four or five thousand people invited. Just like the fucking page, yeah? Like your page. So yes, tonight, Wednesday, 9pm, over on uh, my Facebook page, uh, Scott Gibson Comedy, I'm going to be doing a quarantine quiz, it's a pub quiz, basically, four rounds, um, prizes to be won, fuck all prizes, but you will have the, the joy of saying you are the quarantine quiz champion in your house, so tune in, join us for that, 9pm over on Facebook. One thing that I wanted to talk about as well, um that I found quite funny is this kind of sense of what is a, a key worker or a frontline worker. I was in uh, Lidl, or uh, it was Lidl, I was going to say Aldi, but I think, I'm pretty sure it was Lidl, and I needed coffee, man. That's the only thing I've panicked bought, well, in a sense where I panicked that I didn't have any left, was coffee. I've got endless supply of fucking coffee beans and ground coffee and whatnot, but you need a mug of instant, right? Because when you're working, coffee is one of my loves in life, one of my passions, right? But there are times to sit and enjoy a coffee and there are times to fucking get a mug on, get a brew and fucking get ahead, right? Tom Wigglesworth, an amazing comic who if we ever are released for the compounds, go and check him out. Made an amazing point once, and I'll never, I'll never forget it. We were talking about coffee and espresso machines and whatnot, and he always says, "You never, you never get any work done if you have like a latte or you know a homemade espresso. You need a mug of instant. That's nay, ne- ne- you know, nobody turns up at a building saying, <laughs> fucking froths his milk up and <laughs> put a latte out there. Oh, very nice. You boil the kale." Two big scoops, strong as fuck. You want to stand a teaspoon up in it. Stirry, stirry, stirry. A wee bit of sugar. Come on now. You need some sweetness. And then you fucking plow on with You know, you can, you can kind of, you can, you can move it. You go, oh, look at it. Look at all this, man, you know. Mug instant. So, run out of instant coffee, wait a little. It's the first time that I'd saw empty shelf. So I was like, fuck, I feel as if I'm doing level two of the quarantine game. Went down the aisle where normally the coffee and tea would be fucking empty. The bastards had taken everything. One jar of uh, Nescafe. Uh, but I thought I need to get something. And I saw an elderly lady coming in the corner and she was about to make a beehive for it. And I thought, fucking give it that, man. You shouldn't be out here and you're vulnerable. Get in the house. Get the fucking carers. They'll bring you in a jar of coffee. Tell me we're clapping for them at 8 o'clock on Thursday. So what is a key worker? The reason I ask, as I was in the queue to go and pay for some stuff, um, the guy from Lidl, one of the managers, who was stressed out of his box, man. Out of his box. Was going around saying to people, listen, with the current situation, we're trying to limit it to four items, four of each item. For example, if you've got one tin of soup, you're only allowed four tins in the same soup, right? That kind of thing, so that everybody can try and get something. And I still think four items is a lot. And this, I heard, I, so I had my back to them, and I heard the woman, I say woman, she was an orc-like creature. I heard her say, and I quote, I'm a fucking key worker! Now... As I turned um, to see the uh, the people who were involved in the altercation, um, a big woman um, and uh, her partner, always a wee tiny man. These big, these big women, they always have wee tiny men. I don't know if the man, uh, you know, if they, if they fall from the woman. Uh, I don't know if, if, if they get to a certain size where they suddenly create life. Uh, maybe they roll over one day. 
and a, a, a wee man just falls from one of the rolls of fat. I don't know, but usually, big woman, wee tiny man. Man never speaks. Uh, terrified. Terrified little man. Just standing. <sighs> now, she said, I'm a fucking key worker. I, I don't know what we're classing as a key worker. I don't know what industry she was in. But I think we were on we're on you know we're on a slopey service here, right? Um the the manager was taken aback and he kinda went, What? And she again she says, I'm a fucking I'm a key worker. Now, in her bag she had eight, let me repeat that, eight uh packets of frozen oven chips. Now uh the gentleman uh, simply said that he he would ask that they only take four instead of the eight, and again she stressed, I'm a key worker. Uh, and then the man, to, to his credit, the bravery that it must have taken for this wee man to speak up, he said, what about if I buy four, and she buys four? I was like, now that is, that's logic you can't argue with. Long story short, they were leaving with eight fucking packets of chips, right? She went on to explain that she, she works in a hospital, as a, as a cleaner, I believe. Now, I'm no saying that that isn't a key worker, Right? Because somebody's got to clean a hospital, right? I mean, God forbid we were to fucking buy a, a Roomba, right, to replace you. God forbid. I'm no here to say that if a robot can replace your job, you're no class as a key worker. I'm no saying that. I'm just saying that we need to be careful who we're classed as key workers here. That's all, that's all I'm saying. Because what's going to happen is, once this is all fucking said and done, and everything gets back to normal, you're going to have cunts get into the office going, hey, I'm a key worker fucker, right? I want 80 grand a year and a four day week. So we just need, we need, we need to balance this out a bit. And if you're a key worker and you're, you're a medical staff member, you, you should know that maybe buying eight bags of frozen chips isn't the fucking right move in the current climate when you're probably wanting to slim down for the zombie apocalypse that's coming our way. Needless to say, she left for the fucking eight bag of chips. And I, I paid for my coffee and I left. And I thought, wow, isn't little a joy. I've actually managed to get a list of key workers here, right? And this is uh, frontline workers will be allowed to send their kids to school as Britain fights coronavirus. Now, you may have seen um, some poor <laughs> wee bastards. <laughs> School's a pretty shit time for most kids, right? It's a pretty shit time. And you will form alliances, small groups, gangs, if you will, within the, the larger setup that is your year group. And I can tell you, there's, not, there's nothing worse than having to go to school knowing that members of your, your squad are missing. Now, can you imagine knowing that they're all gone and it's just you and your own? The video of the poor woman... Again, this is what I'm fucking talking about with key workers, right? She's standing there head, head to toe in Asda. <laughs> head to toe, right, in Asda. Even my missus went, does she work at Asda? I went, you taking the piss? No, head to toe in Asda. The boy standing, right? And uh, they're, they're getting it. They're doing the interview with the big fucking, the boom mic, because they're keeping the social distance, right? Uh, why are you sending your cunt to school? Because I'm a fucking key worker. Eh? I work on the fucking, the tills. I asked her, I'm a key worker, 200 grand a year, I'm a key worker. So this wee guy's getting interviewed, and she's saying, are you happy to be at school? He's like, yes. Obviously, he's no, he wants to be in the house. He wants to be in the house playing Fortnite. And now he's fucking stuck in school, probably cell in a classroom, where a teacher he can't stand. You know, going, that's just shit. But, hey, she's a key worker, man. She can send the way to school. So this is what we're classing as key workers, right? NHS staff, first off, I want clarity on the word staff. Now, surgeons, doctors, 
Yes. Key worker. Nurses. Yes, nurses. Now, I'm not here, listen, I'm not, I don't say these things because I mean them. I say these things because these are some thoughts that are in most of our heads, right? Yes, we need nurses and doctors. Yes, they're amazing, right? I wouldn't be here without the NHS. I'd be dead. I'd be lying, fucking pavement dancing, dead, right? If it wasn't for the NHS. But what I'm saying is, let's not do a broad sweep of the NHS, okay? Because let's bear in mind that a lot of nurses are fucking cunts. Let's just keep that in mind. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that there are no key workers. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying a lot of nurses are cunts. Let's just keep that in mind when we're doing this fucking broad. Isn't the NHS lovely? Well, they killed my papa and they stole a KFC off me. That's, I've never let that go, right? They said I was nil by mouth. I wasn't nil by mouth. The fat cunt wanted my chips and she took my key FC off me. Right? I, I'm, I'm not letting that go, okay? I'm just saying, right? NHS staff. Now, I'd go, I'd go do the nurses, right? But below that, I mean... If you if you're if you're running, you run the fucking the the news agents in the fucking in the hospital, right? Are you technically staff? Are you a key worker? Come on, huh? Old cunt in the high vis jacket that walks through to see if people have paid in the in the fucking hospital car park. He's a bastard. A fucking key worker? I think not. A bastard. Social care workers. I mean, I mean again. I'm no. I'm no saying there are no key workers. All I'm saying is, if you have ever had the unfortunate need to deal with a social worker, you'll know they're fucking cunts, right? They're cunts. Again, it's a British thing, man. This shows again. This highlights we're no European social workers. People who are social workers don't want to be social workers. They're shy of their job. And they go, ah, it's the council, son, the council's, the council's cutting everything, but you're still getting paid, your cunt, eh? I'm fucking trying to get him in a care home. Come on, tay fuck. Schools and nurseries. Key workers. I suppose. But then, oh, you're fucking, your mom and dad's in the house, because they're, they're high risk. Send the wains to their grannies. They love it, they can make soup. They'll teach them about racism. Fucking keep the country moving. Police officers. Court staff. A cunt still got the jail? Who's got a court? Imagine getting fucking jury duty the new. That'll be right. Religious staff. What does that mean? Churches are shut. Religious staff. A key worker. You're telling me old Betty on the fucking on the organs a key worker. Journalists. Fuck off. Some government staff, not all, just says some government staff are key workers. <laughs> some MPs, right? Fucking the cabinet. Okay? If you're in a Cobra meeting, you're a key worker. The rest you can fuck off. Right? This this is quickly becoming the catchphrase of coronavirus for me. Fuck off. The amount of times that I, I read a news article and I just go, uh-huh, uh-huh. Fuck off. I've written notes for the show, believe it or not. And I have just written, uh, blah, 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 fuck off. After a lot of to try and emphasise my anger. Some government staff. Delivery workers. Now, now we're talking. Key staff, right? Key staff. Because we're on lockdown, but delivery is fucking running round the clock. Round the clock! Cunts need pizza! Supermarket staff. Key workers. Again, I know there's going to be some supermarket staff listening to this, and I'm not meaning you personally. I'm just saying, we, I, I just think we need to be careful what we what we cover as a key worker. Army, Ministry of Defence. I suppose. I suppose firefighters. Yes. Okay. Yes. Key worker. A fireman or lady or non-binary fire person. Right? A fire person. Transport workers. 
I mean, I suppose, but you know, if, if we're on lockdown, we're not going to be going anywhere. Who's driving buses? Huh? Uh, infrastructure, including gas and electricity. Again, uh, one or two, I suppose. You know, one spark. Eh? A joiner, a plumber. Eh? And some financial services. Some. Again, very vague. So that is the list of apparently key workers. Uh, notice that comedians are not on there. Which I think is a, a fucking disgrace. Considering laughter is the best medicine. I should technically be uh, an NHS staff member. If you're asking me, what the fuck do you know, eh? What do you know? Um, obviously, we, we'll have seen the, the video of the Belfast Trust doctors going, gonna fucking stay at home, you cunt, eh? Wash your hands, clean your gloves and your bowler hat. Rinse it, your bowler hat, before you come in the hospital. I don't, I don't really know what that video, what that video was. Again, I... It may just be me and my, my anger and my lack of antidepressants that I've ran out of in the last week. As somebody who has done uh, a couple of TV programmes and who's, who's filmed a few things, I can tell you now, the amount of, the amount of time you're sitting about is unreal. I, I was once in uh, an episode of Lemmy Show on a fucking toilet. And I, I was in that house for six hours, best part of six hours, for what would have been maybe a minute and a half screen time. I can't imagine how long it took the doctors to film that video. When they, when they all just, you see them standing, right? And in, in if you don't know, the social distancing from each other. I know it looks like it's a chessboard, right? But they're social distancing, metre and a half, two metres, right? Apart from each other. And then what happens is the the camera will go in close on one of them, and then they'll they'll turn around and talk, right? As if as if they didn't know you were there, but now they see you, and they're like, "My name's uh, Bernadette, and I'm a I'm a district nurse, and I'm saying to you, fucking stay at home, you country." Now, the only thing that I was going was, how come some are wearing burgundy tops and some are wearing light blue tops? What what does that mean, huh? And how could I know just had one of them going, all right now, I'm a fucking doctor for sure. Uh, stay in the house, you country. So I didn't need 12 of them talking to me. I'm a, I'm a district nurse and I'm saying, I'm a, I'm a respiratory nurse. And uh, I tell you this, son, oh, it's fucking terrible out there. So it is, it's terrible. Wash your hands, stay in the house. That's probably cutting something the world dying. Choking out, going... <coughs> There's no doctors here, son. They're, all, they're downstairs filming a viral video. I'm, I'm fucking dying. Hey, as long as get the content. That's what life is teaching us now. It's all about content. Get the content. Push the fucking content. So, I don't know, man. It, the, the world's gone to mad, right? It's, it's, it's fucked. But it feels like we're just in this kind of plateau level to know where it's a wee bit mad. Nothing's really happening. So, something's got to kick off. Right? Either cunts need to start biting each other, a few fights in the street, some things need to get set in fire, it needs to either go up a notch and go fucking right, no, we're in a lockdown, or just fucking go back to normal, right? And let's just talk about the Chinese, okay? Let's just talk about it. I've got the fucking Alexa sitting here, right? So she better just shut up. A lot of people have started things like this when there was cunts eating bats, man. I've seen a boy eating a bat and now we're all fucking dying. I don't know where the viruses came from. All I'm saying is this. Yes, I am becoming a fan of conspiracy theories the longer this goes on, right? But look at it this way. At the start of the year, you had scientists, men and women of science, coming on the telly saying, hey, you've got 10 to 12 years to sort this shit out or we're fucked. And they're all like, you're joking? No! And then fucking Thunberg. Now, I've not heard much for her lately. Eh? She's been fucking decommissioned. They switched her off. You turn around going, how dare you? How dare you take away our future? The future of our children, how dare you? So, maybe governments got together, you know? 
in a secret fucking underground lair, as they do. They all, they all escaped in, right? The Rothschilds and the fucking, you know, the dark web, the Illuminati, eh? And they all go together and went, look, turns out some of these science cunts, they might, they might be onto something here, right? Turns out there's a chance, a chance, lads. The world's ending in 12 years, right? So look, as the richest people in the world, as the people who fucking control global empires, as the faceless, pixelated, devil, fucking horn-headed, children of the corn, people who run the world, what the fuck are we going to do? You know, what are we going to do? And they all sat around that table, in the shadow, with the fucking, with the, with the old dark shadow in the face, James Bond style, right? So you just see the, the outline of the bodies, but you don't see the face, you know? And they're all like, what are we going to do? What the fuck are we going to do? And then you hear footsteps. You know? And everybody pans around. And this fucking Mr Miyagi's walking in. Eh? With one of the hairless cats. Dirty bastards. And they're all like, the fuck's this cunt? You know, who's this cunt? And he sits down and he says, Gentlemen! I have something in this box <laughs> that will save the world. And they're like, what is it? Is it oil? Uh, is it coal? Gold? Minerals? He's like, nah. Opens up a beautifully ornate box. I am available for voiceovers. Removes a small capsule. Throws it in the table. And he says, gentlemen, COVID-19. And the credits start. I don't know any James Bond. But that night, so fucking Chinese come in and they say, listen, we've came up with something that kills the fucking vulnerable and the old. And also it's going to instill enough fear across the world that it will force people indoors for up to three months at a time, during which we'll have a cull of the weakest and the elderly people from society and also have a point where human interaction is removed, pollution levels drop, and it allows the world to kind of reset a little bit. And they went, we can't do that. We can't do that! You know? We couldn't inflict such a virus upon the human race. We might be the most disgusting, vile people on the planet. Yes, we're only out for greed and money. We don't care about anyone else, but we can't fucking kill pensioners. And the Chinese went, well, you're fucking lucky we're at the table. Because we don't give a fuck. Virus comes out, spreads, eh? Couple of weeks go by, everyone's like, fucking hell, man, it's mental in China. Look at all the videos, cunts just collapsing the floor, eh? Fuck me, that's mad, isn't it? And then it's in Italy. You're like, well, you know, you can't even flush toilet paper in Italy, so what do you expect? Eh? Spain, France, you're like, fucking French, man. Bunch of shite bags. Then it's here, you know? Then it's here. Now we're on lockdown. Okay? And then the government's putting in record orders for ventilators and masks. Where are these masks being made? China. Okay, so listen. I'm not saying it's a fucking kids, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Watch yourself, right? Watch yourself. That's what I'm saying. Let's look at some numbers. There is a uh, because the world is the world is fucking macabre. We can look at virus cases at the moment across the world. These figures were correct on March twenty fourth which was yesterday. Coronavirus cases in the world, this is 395,583. Let's just refresh that. Oh, it's fucking got up. It's gone up, man, since we opened the website. Current coronavirus cases in the world, 396,224. Confirmed deaths in the world, 17,250. Now, 17,250 people 
you know, that's a Hibs home game. It's a lot. Right? It's a lot of people. But is it, is it as much as you thought? And be honest, because it's not as much as I thought. With, with the way that it's reported and the hysteria in the media, I thought you'd been talking a couple of million by now. But no, 17,000. Right, let's try and get UK figures on here. Where the fuck is... Where is the UK? Uh, China, Italy, Spain, Germany, Iran, France, Switzerland, UK. So we have total cases in the UK... 6,735 total deaths in the UK, 337. Fucking hell. 337. Again, does not seem a lot? Does it seem a lot? Doesn't it? 337. I mean, if you had a pound for everybody that died in the UK, you're not exactly retiring. You're having a good night out. But, we still need to look after each other. We need to stay safe and you wash your hands. You need to think about when you go outside and you come in, you know, you need to burn all your clothing, right? <laughs> when you go out for your daily exercise, whatever that is, and you come back into your house, you stand at the back door, you strip naked, right? And you set fire to all your clothes. Then you need to cover yourself in uh, cooking fat and, and remove all the hair from your body. That's what you need to do. The easiest way to do it is do that before you leave the house, right? So every morning uh, when I get up, uh, you obviously we need to keep the beard. I've also decided I'm not going to shave or trim the beard till this is over. So we're going to be looking like a fucking castaway uh, extra by the time this is done. But every morning you go up, shave, shave every bit of hair off your body, right? Because obviously the disease... Uh, can transfer through hair. We know this. So you want to be looking like a giant jelly baby, right? For the fucking, for the teeth doing hairless. Not a hair on you. Boss sack, nothing. Asshole, gone. Everything, right? Toe hair, removed. Dressed, go out into the fucking quarantine zone. Have your exercise, do what you need to do. Come back home, strip bottle naked, set fire to the class. Now, it's gonna be exp- it's gonna be expensive to do that on a daily basis, but that's what we need to do. Keep pensioners safe, eh? And if I say to you right now, we could save all the old people in the UK, but you need to set fire to all your clothes and possessions. Would you do it? Of course you wouldn't. Fuck them. They had their chance. <laughs> Clean yourself. Wash your hands, man. I know a lot of people, the other thing has been like, keep fit, right? And stop, just stop posting videos of yourself working out from home because nobody cares, right? Nobody cares. And if you're posting videos of yourself doing your home workouts, either people are watching that going, fuck off, or people are watching it going, look at the size of the arse on him, man. Oh, lovely. So you're not going to get the reaction you want, right? And why Why do people feel the need now to do it? Would you like to see us, uh, a wee video of us doing a jigsaw? No. No. But it's, it's a wee jigsaw, it's a, it's, it's one of Monet's paintings made into a jigsaw. Fuck off. Fuck off. Oh, okay then. People think that after quarantine, you know, they'll get the home gym set up. People think they're going to come out of this like Charles Bronson, right? They think they're going to come out of this with like a jail body, fucking ripped. You know, meeting people, cut them down the line going, what happened to you, big man? Uh, fucking quarantined, mate, you know what I mean? Quarantine, I'm fucking benching 755, you know? It's what you're just stuck in all day, mate, no carbs, you know, tap water, fucking six wanks a day, just fucking benching, mate, just lifting stuff, you know? Picking up the sofa, the telly, the wains, man. Don't you have for wains a lot? How you doing, Dan? Look, come here and I bench you. I fucking bench the wains. What's going to happen is... This is going to be like Wally. This is what quarantine is. It's like Wally. Wally. Or the fat cunts on the cruise ship. That's what quarantine's going to be. Nobody's nobody's coming out of this healthier and fitter. We're coming out of this four stone heavier. Blimps. Forget your key workers, man. You're going to need joiners after this to knock out the fucking frame of your door so you can push out your fucking significant other. 
Because the two have just been sitting we had delivery, two bottles of red wine a night going, oh, quarantine's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> and you know the worst thing? This is my normal life. This is my normal life. Sitting in my pants, talking shit, eating crap. It's just every noon I can eat, I can, I can go for a walk without the fear of getting tasered or fucking clobbered. Stay healthy, man. Have a drink. <laughs> Have a drink. <laughs> that is, that should be that. I see if Boris. I mean, this is why I could never be prime minister, right? Obviously, there's a quite a few reasons why. But to have the to have that global audience, you know, and at the end go, what? Wash your hands, um, and have a drink. <laughs> that that's how you should have just. You'd be like, did he just say have a drink? Wash your hands and have a drink. There's the fucking. That's the that's the message, man. I mean, not too much, you know. But wash your hands and have a drink. Why not? But I suppose we've got to look after each other. Stay safe, you know. Key workers, man. Okay, team, so, um, episode 21, man. It's mad to think when we started this podcast, we were in the old house as well, we are in the other house. Life was great, you know, I could see the outside world, how's that, I'm going to walk down that street later, and then he's going to fucking see it. No, we're in the new gaff, which is, which is better, I'm going to be honest with you. Mrs. is working from home. Uh, we had to bring all our stuff over for the office, get her set up. Three monitors, man. As if she's fucking air traffic control. So I'm glad we're in a new gaff with more space. Um, and I'm able to set up the, the broadcast bunker. Eh? The only worrying thing about this is I'm convinced that a wee hand's going to come out the back of this wardrobe and fucking cut my throat as I'm doing one of these videos. But, you know, I, I can think of worse ways to go. I can think of worse ways to go. Um, if you're struggling... Um, you know, hey, get in touch. What can I do for you? Fuck all, right? I can't do anything for you. I'm going to be honest, okay? Well, I know a lot of us are doing these measures. Listen, if you're one of these vulnerable people, get in touch, man. I'll come in and fucking wash your feet for you. It's not going to happen, right? But if you're struggling, get in touch, and I'll fucking, you know, we'll have a bit of a back and forth. Other than that, we're on our own, right? We're on our own. So I suggest you watch Mad Max, zombie land and you learn how to properly sharpen a blade because that's what's going to get us through this right that is what's going to get us through the next couple of months learn how to homebrew and sharpen a blade okay <laughs> these are the skills that we need if you're listening to this and you're, you're at home and you're going i don't know fuck all about geography what am i going to teach you wayne's you teach them how to homebrew and sharpen a blade. And that'll give them all the skills they need for the fucking apocalypse. <laughs> right. Tonight, Wednesday night, nine o'clock, I'm doing the first quarantine quiz on Facebook Live. Um, imagine a pub quiz during the quarantine. That's basically it. Four rounds. It should be a laugh. We'll see how it goes. You can play at home, right? 
Um, but the first one is tonight, nine o'clock, Facebook Live. Uh, Scott Gibson Comedy, if you're looking for me on Facebook. If you haven't already liked the page, fucking like it, okay? I know that we need to be nice and we need to be upbeat and all that and going, listen, why don't you just come and follow me? Fucking follow the page. Like it, okay? And subscribe to the Patreon. None of this. Ball- why don't you consider? Just fucking subscribe, all right? Five dollars. What's that? Nothing, eh? I'm, fu- I'm, I'm, I'm cutting my own throat here. It's about shifting units. <laughs> Get in the Patreon. Support the big man through these difficult times, Right? You can sign up for as little as five dollars. Gets you extra episodes every week. It'll get you some videos. It's gonna get you albums. It's gonna get you fucking live shows. It's gonna get you all sorts, man. And listen, see once this is over and we all go back to normal, whatever normal life is, we're fucking still pushing the Patreon. So don't you worry, man. It's good to be part of the army, eh? The fucking battlefield army. Get in the Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Big Scott Gibson. Sign up if you haven't already. If you have, you're a legend. I fucking love you. I'll fucking kiss you in the lips, man. So I will when I see you in person. I'll oh, fucking right in the lips. If you say to me, big man, I'm a fucking battlefield. I'm a black fucking cuck it up, big boy. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, subscribe to the podcast on whatever channel you listen to them on. Um, if you've got topics and questions, man, get in touch. Right? I know most of us are sitting in the house. Um, if there's anything you'd like me to rant on or something you want to ask, fucking get in touch. Um, it's been a busy week, so I've not had a chance to look at the questions for this episode, but please do, man. Go to the website, um, get on the Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Twitter and Instagram is at Big Scott Gibson, Facebook Scott Gibson Comedy. Send me your fucking questions and we'll do some more of these. We'll rant and whatnot. Uh, episodes drop every Wednesday. Patreon episodes drop every Friday. And throughout the week, there'll be... Little bits and pieces when uh, it happens that will drop out uh, on the Patreon as well. So just fucking join the Patreon is what I'm trying to say. But thanks for listening to episode 21. We have a laugh and we have a joke. I say some things I don't mean. I say a lot of things I don't mean, but I mean this. Stay safe, right? Wash your hands. I know it might seem stupid, but apparently it's the way to go. Wash your hands. And while you're at it, your fucking body. Just wash yourself. Just wash yourself, you dirty fucking smelly cunt, all right? Get up, have a piss, a shit if you need. Get in the shower and just fucking wash yourself, all right? (laughs) And have a drink. Wash your hands and have a drink. Right, let's fucking wrap this up. Again, I said I keep it to an hour. Then we're rambling past it. Thanks for listening. Subscribe, share. I'll see you in the battlefield soon, I hope. I don't know, but hopefully we'll see all of you tonight, 9 o'clock, on Facebook Live for the first quarantine quiz. Let's do it. Let's have a laugh. If nothing else, we'll see how fucked up the stream is from the bunker to you. Take care of yourself, team. As always, a pleasure. I'll see you soon. Almost.